So guess what came today? I'm pretty sure this is my sink. Everybody's been waiting to see if it arrived alive. So we'll see if it did. Really nervous. I'm medium nervous. You're medium nervous? Yeah. It's like 400 boxes. Well, we, we packed it like crazy. Look at all these layers. I don't even remember putting all these on. Well, you kept telling me like, I think it's good. I'm like, no, I don't think so. It's like Christmas. It's like layer 552. We're almost down to it. <laughs> it feels intact. It doesn't feel broken. No. It looks, it looks like it's together. It is exactly the same as how we sent it. That is awesome. So can Jamie and Zeb ship a sink all the way from England? Yeah. Yes, we can. There no it is. No cracks in the bottom, no cracks in the side or the top. Complete with England mold. It's moss. Okay, we'll call it moss. <laughs> it made it. Yay, that's exciting. Zeb just told me I can't go in willy nilly. Also ignore my dirty floors. We have had so much stuff come through here lately. I just showed your floors on my channel like in full depth because I showed them the lumber that was in there. Oh gosh. So there's it's no It's so embarrassing. No These floors are so bad. And even when they're clean, they don't look clean. So this was a much debated item that Zeb was adamant was not, oh, that doesn't sound healthy. Oh. What is it? He was adamant about we weren't gonna ship it. I, I remember that I thought that needed more cardboard. It doesn't sound like completely like toast. Wood inside of something. I don't know what it is. What do we pack? But anyways, we'll see what's in here and see if it made it. I paid 50 pence for the largest item in here. I mean, it was really wrapped up, whatever this is. Oh yeah, that doesn't, this is hard. I was right. Oh, it's just, it's just a lid. That's good because that's expensive. This is the older one, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. yeah it is. This is the Cornish ware that people have been begging me to buy. So hopefully they buy it because it was all expensive. Um, This is my puppy bowl. Hopefully the other one made it too. Now I just need you to make me a stand. Can you do that? Made in England. Well, first I actually have to test it to make sure there's not lead in it. But I actually don't think it's that old. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's under the glaze. So I'm glad that this actually made it here. There you go. Because we only, as of right now, we only have one that hasn't sold out of about 10 or so. Oh, here's the wine rack or rolling pin. Oh, this is a that needs to go straight outside. We brought it with the cobwebs. It's a little bit. It was 50 pence, which is like 75 cents. You guys believe that was 75 cents? It's worth like two. 65. Oh, 65. It's worth like $200. I'm glad it made it. But it took up like a huge portion of this box. My plan was to like stuff a bunch of stuff inside of it, but then we wound up packing that elsewhere. Well, you know, it's just, we got to go get, I'm going to have to turn like 50 rolling pins so that we can actually put this to use. I think somebody's just going to buy it. Yeah, those... Those spiders can stay here. I'm gonna get in trouble. They're gonna be like, did you ship English spiders? Sure did. All right, both dog bowls made it. So now we just have to wait for Zeb to uh, make up a stand. Maybe for Christmas. We're gonna see how well this survived. That feels good, intact. Yeah, no intact. breakage. Put it inside the copper. Oh, this one, the bottom one's broken. I can hear it. These, ones, uh... these actually might both be broken. So we'll see. But the copper pot made it. I think it's like the only copper bowl that we got. That one needs a good scrubbing. Yeah, I'm gonna go soak this. Maybe that's one I'll shine up. Okay. I only thought I bought two of those and they both sold right away. So I'm hoping that this one actually made it because I forgot that I bought a third. There's a little cheese box. Yeah. We'll see. See if it survived. I packaged this one. Oh, that's probably why. But it survived. It was a box within a box within a box. <sighs> That's not always their survival mode, but you know. This one's this one, the oldest. Yeah, that one actually might be one of the prettier ones. Well, I, there was one that had like a thing on the, like on the inside. All right, so it's been a few hours. We're still gluing things together and we've unloaded. I think this is like three boxes 
Um, and then there's like that big thing that we showed you earlier. And we're just gonna get started photographing stuff and then I'm gonna lay in bed and eat chocolate cake and list it all. And we'll see you guys tomorrow when we're painting that dresser. Plus guess, chocolate cake. Plus chocolate cake. <laughs> That's looking nasty. Tell me of your concoction. Uh, flour and lemon juice and a scrubby. I'm just kind of making a paste. And you can see though that the shine, this was like black. I should have filmed it beforehand, but I didn't really expect it to work. And you just kind of let that sit on there and then you just scrub it up, scrub it up, dub. Good Thursday morning. It is furniture day. We're going to head over to the shop with everything that we've already listed um, from England because that's like a constant thing. I think by the end of today, we should have everything listed that we have. And then anything else that comes in will go up for the Saturday haul. Um, and we're going to go grab the dresser that's in the barn because it's actually warmer to work on it from our house because we have a south facing driveway and it's gotten rather cold. So we're gonna go grab that so we can get started sanding in our garage, then we'll just paint it inside the house. All right, so Zeb already loaded it up himself. I didn't get it filmed, but the dresser's ready to go back to our house. And we're gonna load up the England Thrift Hall into the shop, which actually, I feel like I listed more than that. Maybe I didn't. This is all that was on the bench and the windowsill. It was a lot of little stuff. Yeah, lots of little stuff. Everything is on the table, ready to be shipped. The gals will put like sticky notes for things that they're waiting on. So they'll take the things that have sold and put them away. We've already started like positioning items for sale in the shop. One of the things I think we've talked about before that we've been doing is we just put a little E on the tag. So that way when people come in, they can see that it's from England because we have things spread out through the entire shop. I'm thinking that probably next week, once we see what sells after this week's thrift haul video, that we might redo some of these displays and then have like a lot of copper and enamel together. But for now, everything's kind of just put throughout the shop. The next thing is like, where is a new piece of furniture gonna go? It probably doesn't look like we have a ton of room, but this piece can actually go at the end of that where that black piece is. The black piece, I'm thinking, can go right behind Zeb. Over here in this display, it'd be really pretty with my Christmas tree. And then the new dresser will go where this blue piece is. We call it the like junk two-step. It's just like moving stuff around until it all fits. And it's really important to have a lot of furniture because while we were gone, we actually sold multiple pieces of furniture and they had to have pieces to work with. So I like to keep the shop pretty full, especially coming up on the holidays. So if we don't have time to get something done right away, we still have pieces we can kind of maneuver around and make it look nice and full. Someone made mention the other day that we needed much greener grass and prettier hedges. While we do have beautiful mountains over there, you can see, we also live in the desert. So we're working on the yard. It'll take a while for it to get nice and green and lush. I get it all loaded up. It's kind of got this yucky uh, enamel paint finish on it. It's pretty thick. It's kind of gross. Um, but the uh, trim is in really good shape, which is nice. I don't have to remold any of that. So I think what we're gonna do is just like sand where the veneer has like lifted up just to make it a little bit more smooth. I'm not gonna fill it in. And I'm gonna remove all the hardware and get that um, on the stove boiling in some water. And then we'll need to sand behind it to smooth that out. Like just when you thought this was easy, when people say that when we paint stuff, we're ruining it. I'm telling you right now, this is enamel paint. And that is what ruined this 100%. Like, if you were to try to get this all the way off, that would be a nightmare. Oh, there's the screw. So I was, like, struggling to get that off. That enamel paint the is The screw gross. was off, but it's, like, basically glued with the enamel paint on here. Yuck. I'm just going to put this on low and just kind of let it slowly simmer. It'll come to, a, a, like, a soft boil and I'll check it while I'm working on the project. 
Um, usually within about 30 minutes, it softens up the paint and we can get it off with a wire brush. And then maybe we'll do some lemon juice and flower trick like we did on the copper. Speaking of copper, I want to show you. I worked on it probably half an hour and then Zeb came in and gave us some more elbow grease. Remember our dirty, nasty copper pan? Look at this baby. No chemicals, just flour, organic flour at that, and lemon juice, and it polished up so good. We didn't even buff it. Like, I feel like we could get our buffer out, but this is pretty good. Zeb said we made it look too good. People won't think that it's actually old, but I think it looks, now I just want to do like all the copper that I own. Zeb, you ready for that? That looks like an hour of scrubbing between the two of us. <laughs> but it looks good. And we let it soak for a hot minute too. It, but now we know it works. I'm gonna try it on the brass today too. All right, so we're mixing up Bondo because Zeb's getting fancy with his repairs. So you can see that there's veneer damage here. Um, that sounded okay smooth there, but this is like a big chunk. This one here is what I'm real concerned about. This looks like a heartbeat. It's just not good. So it comes with a cream hardener. You wanna work fast, well-ventilated area. If you're sensitive to smells, this is not a good option because this is not natural in any way, shape, or form. But lots we, of VOCs. Lots of VOCs. Wear a mask. All the things. There's lots of different kinds of bondos. This is just the one that we use. It's non-shrinking and permanent, so that's why we use it. And it's super easy to paint. So when you're doing bondo, I like to leave it a little proud because it's kind of sticky and goopy and it wants to pull out when you pull across. So I just leave it raised up and it sands down pretty easy once it's hardened with uh, 80 grit sandpaper or even 20 grit would work. Yeah, this is the side of the dresser that's kind of yucky. Yeah, I pushed it underneath there too because it'll act like a glue almost. Oh, you're gonna need more than that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Zeb has got this all prepped for me while I was listing a bunch of stuff on the website. So we're gonna go ahead and get started painting. I'm using DIY's clay-based paint and aviary. I wanted a mossy green. And then I'm thinking about using the Chateau inlay, but I'm gonna paint it first and then I'll grab the inlay and see. So over here, you're gonna see like varying wood grains. The veneer was so bad that Zeb tried to glue it. He tried to bondo it and it wasn't working. So he just literally sanded it smooth and feathered it up. So you can't even feel the difference and we're painting over the top of it to kind of hide that. The only way to fix that besides what we did would be to completely remove all the veneer and replace it. And that would require me charging thousands upon thousands of dollars plus shipping for this, so. The piece isn't worth it, it's no. not that old. No, it's from Pennsylvania. It's probably from the early 1900s, maybe 1920, 19, 1920 to 1940. It looks like it had machine dovetailing and it already has like this yucky enamel paint finish that would need to be stripped and... So close to antique era, it's about 100 years old right around in there, 80 to 100. And a lot of people think, oh, because it's antique, it should have never been painted. This was a mass produced piece. It is not like super special or fancy. Maybe in like 400 years it might be, but by then it would have probably been uh, firewood anyways. This paint will help seal in and protect this piece, maybe make it last another 100. So Zeb took these drawers outside so we can second coat them. Well, first we'll figure out the inlay, then we'll second coat them. We're actually gonna lay this on its back completely. And then we'll be able to lay out the inlay, then we'll second coat it and lay that inlay down. And then while the inlay is drying, we'll second coat everywhere else. We did all of that prep work and painting so that we can now use this Iron Orchid Designs paint inlay, the Chateau and it comes together kind of in all one piece. So I'm gonna lay this out while we got it flat and then we'll see where we wanna put everything we wanna do in the insets up in the drawers and then down here on the big face of this drawer. And we're gonna do it continuous over this um, gap between the drawers and we'll see, see how we can do that. There's eight sheets total. So I'm gonna start with the middle ones and work out. Once we figured out the layout, we get our scissors out and we're just going to cut around the applique detail that's on this piece. We're also going to cut off the detail edge because the paint doesn't go all the way to the edge of the inlay. So you have to cut that off so you can lay it down and butt them up. 
This is probably the most important part when you're doing a piece like this is to get that nice and straight and get those edges cut in so that way you don't have lines that show up. It's one continuous piece and you just want it to look smooth and put together. So Zeb's just gonna use a pencil and mark it so that way he can cut at the exact right spot. Once you get it all cut out, then you're ready to put on the paint. We're gonna be using a second coat of aviary on this, and I'm just gonna paint enough to do two squares of paint. Um, so I can just use two papers. You're gonna to wanna to do a little bit at a time because the paint needs to be wet when you put it down. You don't wanna to have too much paint or too little paint. I know that that's kind of a hard concept, but you can see that I'm putting it on there, making sure it's nice and even, but then I'm brushing it out so it's smooth and so I don't have big globs of paint that will be smushed by the inlay. Once you get your inlay down, you're just gonna rub it on. And I'm actually going to bust out the brayer here in a minute because I really wanna make sure that this is in the paint. We are going for like an old world wallpaper look, so I don't want it to be perfect. We will do another video soon showing you guys how to put the inlays into top coat and you can get a more perfect finish that way, but the look we're going for is old world and so I want it to look chippy. So putting it into paint is gonna be perfect. The IOD brayer works well if you don't have it, if you just have any kind of brayer that you can push it down into, it's great. Be careful not to get so hard on the edges that you push the paint out, that's how you're gonna get lines. Once you've got it down, you can take a damp rag or a mister bottle and get the back of the paint inlay wet. This is gonna help secure the paint from the inlay to the paint on your piece. You're gonna let that sit on there until it kind of goes light again, the way it looked before you got it wet. And then you're going to be able to do another layer of water over the top and peel it back. Zeb's just gonna be working piece by piece and get this all done. If you want detailed instructions and when you actually get started on your piece, everything is written on the back of the inlay. So you don't have to remember all the little details that I'm giving you. Now you can see that it's gone kind of solid again. It's not like see-through. That means it's dry. So we're gonna come back in with the damp rag. Zeb's gonna be working on the top pieces and I'm just gonna get these wet so that way we can peel them back. So just Zeb, peeling right on Zeb just using a wire brush and pliers because it's hot and it's actually easier to get it off when it's warm because if you let it cool down then it just like solidifies again but it's just coming right off of that brass you could put it in the sink that might help maybe all right we sprayed it off real quick so it's cool enough to grab because that was just going to be a nightmare to hold that with those pliers did it cool down too much? No, it's still flaking off. Well, Zeb finishes the hardware, I'm gonna get started sanding. I have my random orbital sander and I'm using 220 sandpaper. I am not going to use this over the inlay, just on the solid paint parts to smooth out my paint finish and to give us a little bit of a worn look on the edge because I wanna bring back some of that white paint that's underneath. I'm gonna ever so carefully use 220 sandpaper and hit the edges closest to the inlay. And I am gonna sand the actual inlay just a little bit, but just be careful because it can smear the paint. Um, you don't wanna overdo it. I do like to go along the area um, where the lines might have like kind of edged up. Also, when you're removing any of the dust after you've sanded the inlay, I just like to blow it off. If you don't have access to an air hose, you can use a blow dryer or whatever. Don't wipe it because you can smear it and then you're gonna get smudgy paint. Now that we're done sanding, Zeb is using Sweet Pickens Top Coat Final Finishes in matte. Really big pointer here. Do not overwork the paint. 
He's actually even overworking it a little much. You're going to put the sealer on and then just wipe it smooth and don't push too hard. If you do it that way, then you won't have to worry about the paint smearing. If you're concerned about that, you can also set it by putting in a Mr. Bottle, half sealer, half water, spray the inlay, and that'll make it so it doesn't bleed. But we didn't have any problems with this piece. We just waited till it was all the way dry, and then we put the sealer on there. I actually kind of love how it's like pretty faded and muted and aged looking. It's like our signature look. Okay, the sealer is still drying on the top. Seb heat gunned the base, but I want to show you how gorgeous this brass hardware is on here. People are like, don't paint the hardware, you'll ruin it. It's really not that hard to clean it up. We made it. There's still a little bit of light. We will have a slow-mo of everything up close at the end of this video. If you guys need paint and products, be sure to visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jane Marie Vintage for more DIY. We'll see you on the next episode.